Now that we know how to get data into our spreadsheet, and we know how to edit our data if we make a mistake, let's see how we can format our sheet to make it look a little more professional. Now the first thing that I'd like to change is the way that the columns line up. Notice that January and February and March and April don't line up over the numbers that they represent. It'd be nice if we could justify those to the right side of the cells so they'd line up over the numbers. By default, text will always line up to the left side of the cell. For example, Chris, Alex, Jan, and Pat's names are all text. They line up to the left side of the cell. Any numbers or dollar values or dates that you enter are going to line up to the right side of the cell. Now you can change that using these little buttons right up here. Here's a line left, center, and a line right. Now before we can use them, we have to tell Excel which cells we want to change. In order to do that, we're going to first select the cells using the mouse. I'm going to click and drag across those four cells, B1 through E1. Let me show you that again. I'm going to click down here in the right field just to move the focus and watch again. I'm going to take the mouse and I'm going to click, hold the button down, and drag it across from B1 to E1. I've just created what's called a cell range, a range of cells from B1 to E1. And now that I have those cells selected, I can come up top here and click on the Align Right button. And there we go. Notice how the month names are now lined up to the right side of the cell. You could also click on the Center button. Notice how they're now centered. Or the Align Left button to put them back the way they were. But we want them right justified, so I'm going to click on Align Right. And there we go. And again, now I'll come down here and just click over in right field so that nothing is selected. Now the next thing that I'd like to do is to make our header row across the top stand out a little bit more. So let's select cells A1 through E1. We'll highlight the top row. And let's bold that text. So I'm going to come over here and click on this B for bold. And there we go. We've just bolded the text. If you decide you don't want them bolded anymore, just click on the B again, and it will unbold them. The same works for italics or underline. But let's just leave our text bolded right now. And there we go. We can also change the font and the font size. The font can be found over here. Here's Arial. And you can open up the font box by clicking on the arrow next to it. And here's a big long list of fonts, everything from Arial Black to Book Antiqua. Again, we talked about fonts in our Word 101 class, but fonts are just ways to display the text. Here's Times New Roman, for example, another very popular font. I'm going to stick with Arial for this example. So I'm just going to close this font menu by clicking on the arrow again. If you want to change the font size, you can open up the font size box. Let's make our text a little bit bigger. Let's go to 12 point. And there we go. Now notice something very interesting happened. The sales rep label up here in cell A1 is getting chopped off. Why is that? That's because the information, the text in there, is now too big to fit in that cell. So we need to somehow make column A a little wider. And here's how you do it. Take your mouse and move it right over the border between columns A and B, right there on the header. And notice how your mouse turns into a double pointed arrow. At this point, click, hold the mouse button down, and drag it to the right. There we go. You'll see the column widens out to wherever you drop it. You can now also click and drag it back and make it shorter. You can do that with any column that you want. Here's column B. And so on. 
The same trick also works for rows. If you want to make rows bigger or taller, just click and drag up and down. Here's a quick trick. Let me widen that column out a little bit. To make a column fit automatically the data that's in it, just move your mouse here over that border and then double click. Watch this. And there we go. I just double clicked and notice how the column made itself exactly as wide as it needed to be to fit the information in it. So that's a neat little trick. Another thing I'd like to do to kind of make that header row stand out is to change the color of the text. Again, let's highlight A1 through E1. And first, let's change the background color. Now, notice right up here on the formatting toolbar is a little paint can. And underneath the paint can, it's yellow. And notice how the little tooltip that pops up says fill color yellow. If you click on the paint can at this point, you get a yellow background. Here I go. And there we go. We have a yellow background. What's that you say? You don't want a yellow background? Aren't you picky? Here's how you change it. Notice there's a little down arrow next to the paint can. Go ahead and click on that. And a little color palette pops up. Now you can pick from any one of these colors. Let's say I want to go with a light blue. There we go. Now I have a light blue. The same trick applies for changing the foreground color of the text. For example, here's the A that represents the foreground color or the font color. If you click on that A, you get the color underneath the A, which in this case happens to be red. But those colors look nasty together. So let's change it. Again, I'll click on the down arrow next to the A, and let's pick a different color. Let's pick something like a dark blue. And there we go. And that looks much better. Let's click down here somewhere in right field, and perfect. Our header row looks very good.